it's time for another episode of How To Fix Dark Souls and today it is all about online. And yes, I have changed the name of the series slightly in order to make it a little bit more clickbaity, but that's fine because we deliver. We've touched upon this topic before in the first episode, but in this episode we'll be covering how we think online interactions should work, along with a load of different covenant ideas. Now, this series is never meant to be super outlandish, we want our ideas to be fairly grounded in realistic possibility, building on established concepts in order to create a concept of a game that seems like an achievable thing. You know, in order to pretend like our dreams have a fucking hope in hell of it ever coming true. So before we go on, blah 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 blah, this is our opinion, don't be a retard in the comments, the series is meant to spark discussion, don't take shit all personal as if I had stood your mum up on a date or something, if you disagree, tell us why and just be civil for fuck's sake. I can't believe I still need to say this in videos, honestly. Now, we have covered a lot of this in earlier videos, however the context behind it all definitely wasn't the same, so this video will be coming at it from a new, hypothetical game standpoint and not more than about things in previous games anywhere near as much as we did in other videos, and a lot more new ideas into the mix as well. So let's quickly recap with what we've already said. We think that a player should be given the choice of what death system they want to play the game in, whether that be in the character creation or you know a secret you can opt into via an NPC quest. You know, the quest options is a bit more interesting in my opinion. Anyway, hence this affects how online works for them, obviously. The system's being a hybrid humanity slash ember system from Dark Souls 1 and 3, and the hollow system from Dark Souls 2. Now, realistically, both of these systems can easily and completely operate simultaneously. There's no reason why they can't. Lots of people prefer either system, so why compromise and pick just one? Especially when, you know, it'd be a cool, you know, a little addition to the game, kind of, you know, how Hollow was in Dark Souls 3, they could have, you know, just went the, the full mile with that and made it work like the way Dark Souls 2 did. I thought that's how it was going to work, but it was completely different. Alright, so I've said this a bunch of times, but, you know, obviously, we don't want you having to watch older videos in order to get what we're saying, but, right, the hybrid system would mean that the downside of the Ember system can be fixed, essentially which was being able to use an ember anywhere, i.e. right outside the boss and forgo the risk reward of I'm an ember form and now suspect to online play. Hence, you should only be allowed to ember slash humanity at a bonfire. This allows you to play offline if you want by staying unembered, but you know, you still take that 33% cut to HP. If you want full HP for the area or the boss, or to be able to summon a phantom, you need to go embered and hence, then you're suspect to be invaded. The other system is essentially just being a copy of the Hollowing system from Dark Souls 2. A gradual depletion of your max HP on death instead of 33%. You can Ember, Humanity, FJ, whatever you want to call it, anywhere at any point to restore max HP, but you can be invaded at any point, unless you're in a boss. So unlike every other Souls game, aside from 2 I think, but even then I'm not sure, you should be able to be invaded even after a boss has been killed in that area. It honestly makes no sense gameplay wise that killing a boss shuts off online play. It only harms the people that want online play, and it means you can't complete the game and then head back to, say, Erythel to invade PvP players as an example, or, you know, be invaded. Now, you've probably guessed that, yeah, we're quite PvP focused players. Uh, now, this is a turn off for some people, sure, but, you know, frankly, it has been a core part of the Dark Souls experience since Demon's Souls. It adds an element of tension and unpredictability to the game, which is, like, core to the experience. Like, I mean, it's just, what would Dark Souls be without invading at this point, you know? However, if you really want to play offline, we think that you should be able to turn online off for a period of time, slash, that area, for a cost, at least say, the burning of like an ember, humanity or whatever, uh, or other consumable. Why the cost? Well, you know, it fits in with the you don't get something for nothing aspect of Dark Souls. The online play is a core feature, like I said, hence shutting it off should, you know, have a price. It was like this in Dark Souls too. you can always play offline, but people also don't want to hear that and complain when you say it for some reason. Hence, you should be able to turn online off if you really want to or be able to turn it back on after a boss. Either way is fine, it doesn't matter. Without a doubt, the game should include an arena somewhere near the start of the game, or like a reward for completing the game. The base game, not DLC included. And, you know, basically the way Dark Souls 3 Arena is, is essentially exactly how I'd want the arena myself. It was absolutely perfect when I was playing it, so... You know, except with maybe some leaderboards, I'd appreciate that. In an old video we spoke about a 1v1 covenant, and as much as I do like that idea, it's just a more restrictive arena overall, however we're going to get to that later on in the video. 
having an arena as part of the DLC just serves to split the community. We've said this a million times, so you know, that isn't what any of us want. So in our game, we'd have an arena either near the beginning or at the end. So here we are, the bread and butter of the video, essentially. Now this is the basic invasion rules. Essentially, you know, being in certain covenants could tweak these slightly, but for now, <clears throat> let's get on with it. So, in regards to invaders, if you die in another world as an invader via an orb or auto summon, you go back to the last bonfire you rested at and your souls are in your world where you used the invasion item slash where you were stopped because you were summoned. And of course it is treated as if you died in your world, so you come back unembered slash one more stage of hollowedness more. Your souls should not be where you died in their world, Dark Souls 3, Miyazaki. So if you win, you go back to the same spot you stopped at and you still have all your stuff, plus whatever you won from killing them. As an invader, you need to be embered slash not hollow in order to use an invasion item or be eligible for auto summon. This means there is at least some punishment for losing online invasions if you're doing them next to a bonfire for instance. Regardless of being hollow or embered, whatever system you've picked, if you invade, your HP will be 33% of your max. You also can't heal as an invading phantom, however I am toying with the idea of it. Not that you can't heal, it's just that you invade with no Estus and then you get one Estus for killing an opposing phantom. So as a friendly phantom, you can put your sign down embered or hollow, whatever. You enter the world with 33% of your max HP. Regardless of if you died or you win in their world, you return back to yours in the place where you stopped at before you were summoned. If you beat a boss with the host, then you get an ember or effigy as a reward, that way you know you can go human. As I said before, I think that our hypothetical game should use a fixed Estus system like in Dark Souls 1. So I think friendly phantoms can get an amount, maybe three, so you know maybe certain covenants can get five, or maybe just all get five, whatever. Regardless, like in Dark Souls 2, they can heal until the host is invaded, in which case only the host can heal, and maybe the invader if they kill a phantom, maybe. On the flip side, killing an invader could allow that friendly phantom one extra heal, even if another phantom invades. Does that seem fair? Like, it's not that I'm against healing necessarily, I just think it's bullshit when you look at what Dark Souls 3 had in store. But you know, I think a little bit of healing in a way that rewards like a friendly phantom for you know coming in and actually uh, killing an invader because then you know they can get their health back. Or if they're really good and kill the invader without taking any damage then they've got an extra heal for the rest of the level. It seems balanced to me. So initially I've been thinking that once invaded, a host can't manually summon in any more phantoms than they have currently until the world is clear of hostile phantoms. But as our game doesn't play like Dark Souls 3, I actually don't see the problem with a host summoning in more phantoms. There should maybe be a little bit of a cooldown, sure, but as friendlies can't spam heal anymore, the mass migration of friendly phantoms isn't necessarily an issue anymore. I mean, in theory anyway. Plenty of shit works in theory, communism works in theory, getting a boner from a convincing trap should work in theory, but we all know things just might not work out the way they're meant to, right? So I'm still unsure if I'd like the concept of one very, very slow heal by using an ember slash effigy like in Dark Souls 1. I feel like it was balanced due to how fucking slow it was, and it was a pain when it happened, but I was never as salty about that when I was, you know, about S Dark Souls 3 S to spam. Healing via Estus could be allowed potentially if it's a slow heal like Dark Souls 2, which again, in my vision of the game it is. It's far easier to punish and you can't just spam heal. So again, in theory, I think giving up an Ember for what would be the equivalent of a life gem, but with an even slower wind up, could maybe be alright. For this though, I want to know your thoughts on the topic. Something I'm sure we can all agree on is that Invaders were simply at too much of a disadvantage, and I understand that invaders should be at a disadvantage, but for new players it was very, very, very discouraging when you're up against a host summoning three phantoms over and over again when they all have seven Estus and there's fuck all you can do about it. So, maybe healing's okay if it's like very limited, because you know, obviously everyone can use the pop and ember thing, but... I don't know if that makes it okay, so what do you guys think about that? So now we're going to move on to covenants. In terms of covenants, we have a bunch of ideas based on current covenant concepts. 
So, in this section, we're going to go through our ideas for possible covenants that could make an appearance. So, before that though, here's an idea. You find a white sign soapstone and a black eye orb somewhere in the game, and depending on the covenant you're joined will alter its effects. Without the covenant, they just work like the standard white sign and the red eye. Not all covenants will affect the sign and orb. So, for instance, you join the Dark Wraith covenant, and then it turns the black eye orb into a red eye orb. You turn, you join the Dark the Dark Moons, and it turns the black eye orb into a blue eye orb. As a general rule of thumb, the invasion rules for Dark Souls 1 and 3 should just be the standard. It's based on your soul level. You can invade people your own level, plus 10%, and the same goes with a summoning sign, except it's plus or minus 10%. So for me, the whole idea of a covenant is to create interesting interactions between players. They are primarily an online component of the game. In saying that, you should be able to level up covenants offline without excessively low drop rates. That kind of shit adds nothing to the game. Another thing that they added to the game, uh, which wasn't in Dark Souls 1 or 2, was the ability to switch between covenants on the fly. This was generally unnecessary as it just added extra steps to a simple task, like it just didn't add anything. Um, and of course, the fact that they let you switch between covenants on the fly in Dark Souls 3 was a great thing! So, some covenants use auto summoning mechanics, this means you can just equip the covenant, forget about it until you get summoned in for your specific role. And if you want to stop, you can just unequip your covenant. Simple. This means that for auto summon mechanics, you don't need to wear a ring anymore. Now, in Dark Souls 1, if you, like, left a covenant by joining another covenant, you'd get sin for that, but I think there's a better way of going about that, and that's by... You can wear any covenant and do the covenant tasks, but things start to change once you, like, level up one covenant, and then you also level up another covenant. Then is when changes start to, you know, like, your allegiance, that kind of thing can come into play. But otherwise, I think you should just be able to, you know, just play however you want, and then, you know, you can delve deeper by leveling up the covenants. I think that's the best way of going about it. So, that brings me to the end of another video. So, like I said, in the, like, you know, that, that starting clip thing, I'm sorry for how long this is fucking taking, and yes, this is part of one video, the second part will upload tomorrow, it's just that I really didn't want to upload a 30 minute video, you know, YouTube algorithms and all that. Now, as ever, as in every video, I want to thank everybody on Patreon, and honestly, I want to thank everybody because I just, so much shit just seems to keep happening that slows me down with this channel, and anytime I upload a video, see as soon as I just start getting people like commenting the video and just talking to everybody, it just makes me realise that doing it is worth it. So. Sometimes I do feel a little bit demoralised and I, do, I don't like it, I don't like feeling that way, but I do like this channel and I fucking love every single one of you. So thank you for, you know what, just keep me going, just thanks for keeping me going. I mean, I, I know I'm not the biggest channel or whatever, but the fact that people do appreciate what I do, at least to some level, just makes it all worthwhile honestly, so yeah. So I'm going to stop rambling on and you can watch the second part of this video because the second part does go into quite a lot of depth with a lot of different covenant ideas, so, you know, I, I did what I just, you know, it was a natural break in the video, and it just makes more sense. Anyway, I'll see you in that video, guys, and have a good day.